What's up, everyone? I'm here with Nick and Tyler. We, ju we just did a thing. We did yeah. just do a thing. <laughs> what Big was thing. that thing? Race for 25 hours and one minute, and, and some one minute race basically the entire race. Yep, <laughs> just turned out laps the whole entire time and made it to 1095 miles, which is also a new record for you guys, right? Yep, yep. A, new a new record, record. for lemons, a new record for lemons, yes. EV record. Yes, so some of you might have seen the EV Dotson before, and we took a deep dive with these guys on where the Dotson came from, how they got into racing how they built this into the technical nitty gritty. But what I want to do today is walk around a truck that is still hot from the track yeah, and quite. take a look at what we got going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. We want to see. Let's, uh, let's start at the front here. So what are we looking at? Many people might think that, uh, not expect to see a radiator right. here in the front. Yeah, so obviously no engine anymore. But because we have an inverter, a motor, and a battery, everything still needs cooling. So we actually have three separate coolant loops in here, and then all the, uh, excuse me, all the tanks are up here, and we just flow through here, and we have fans, so it keeps everything nice and cool. Day like today, where it's over 105, it gets a little iffy, but generally this is enough. And it was enough to get through the race. It, it was safe, cool enough. We didn't have any overheating problems the whole 25 hours. And yesterday it was, what, 108, 110? Yeah, about that. Brutal. Yeah. Absolutely brutal. This is really cool ducting that you guys did yeah. there. <laughs> that says race car. It's Speaking. very lemons. Lemons. Lemons yep. ducting. <laughs> um, so on the front here, uh, talk a little bit about the lights that you guys had to engineer and, and get on this truck for running an overnight race. Yep. Yeah, so overnight here at Thunder Hill, there are lights, but it's still pretty dark. So we obviously have our front for our forward facing lights they can't be too high and they check that at tech but we also have these apex lights which are just some 3d printed mounts with some pod lights that way when you're going into a tight turn you can see into the corner before you've actually rotated the vehicle and we we first did the truck without the apex lights and at night it was really difficult to see when you were in a tight corner it was just pitch black on your exit so getting the the apex lights at an angle helps so much to widen your field of view that's really cool um the the crosses, is this, explain, explain. I see a lot of these cars with it and I- The crosses are just a style thing for us. It's is an it? old rally, rally uh, okay. thing where we had, uh, you have the glass lenses and you put X's over them. So if they get hit by rocks, you don't take out the bulb. Okay. Because race car. So it's a safe, because race car. Yeah. So this is for <laughs> safety and speed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's walk around just a little bit onto this side. And, uh, oh, oh, we almost got too far. Talk about this front splitter here. This is new, right? Some yep. of the pictures that we saw in the podcast episode didn't have that. Yep, so this, we did a whole aero package over the last winter. So we got the front splitter, got it a flat bottom under tray, a diffuser and a tonneau cover, and this little cab thing on the back. Uh, a lot of people might notice this is a really small splitter, but we're not trying to get downforce. We're just trying to get really efficient. Okay. Right, so we, we put the splitter, you know, as small as we could size it and still get the right aerodynamic effect. Um, yeah, so it's it's not about downforce. It's being just about, about being slippery. Yep. Yeah, it, it just barely uh, sticks out in front of the bumper. So we get most there going over the top and that's all we need. 
that's uh, that's interesting. So I did get the opportunity to drive this car, and I thank you guys so much yeah, for that. Maybe we should by the be way. interviewing you. <laughs> I know. Um, no, I really lucked out being able to just join the team and hop right in. You guys have put in so much work into this, but I w never found it lacking any downforce. And if you would have asked me, I would have been like, "Well, we have a." front splitter on there but so interesting it's just for smooth airflow yeah yep. and, yeah and for me like driving it without the arrow and with the arrow i didn't really notice a lot of difference in terms of like corner grip yeah but a huge difference in terms of how much straight line speed and power we were able to get out of it and you could just hear it even in the car because there's no engine right it's yeah. quite quiet so as you're going down the straight before there was a lot of this turbulent wind noise uh, and since we did all this arrow it's it's a lot more quiet down the straights that's really cool it's really interesting to hear and something that i don't think you normally can tell the difference in most cars right i thought it sounded awesome yeah it sounded really really cool let's uh look at this here is uh, not your average street tire um <laughs> the, we ran an entire 2501 on the same set of tires right yep that's correct this is it's a ventus rs4 from hankook uh we actually normally run a narrower tire but they sold out, so we went wider, and for some reason, we didn't even use half of the tread on this tire. So we just did the longest race we've ever done, and we're gonna get two races out of this set. Maybe uh, maybe you stick with the wider. I think we're going to. Are these custom built yep. that you guys uh, created yourself? Yep, so the, the wheels give you a little bit more aerodynamic efficiency if yep. you cover them, uh, and you ha we have gaps too, that's supposed to help. Uh, so just 3D printed covers, zip tied on. That's awesome. Did you scan those or just yep. measure and Yeah, I have a 3D scanner, so I just scanned oh, the whole sweet. wheel and tire and designed it up. And under here is some coilover suspension, right? Yep, they're just BC coilovers. They're mostly a street setup, uh, which is plenty good enough for us because we're, we're probably cornered just as fast as any other car here, if not better. Yeah, we definitely could keep up on the, uh, on the corners for sure. Yep. Um, and this is kind of hard to see, but you said this is, is that sheet metal all the way under yep. the so entire way? One big sheet of aluminum from just behind the front wheels to just in front of the rear wheels. And then it's got a bunch of folds and some reinforcement underneath, so it's completely flat to give us nice and smooth arrow, arrow for underneath. That brings us around to the cab. Um, one thing that I was really surprised about is that you guys actually took the seat off center. So it's a little bit more towards the center of the truck, which gives some more foot room down yeah. there. Yep. It's pretty cool. Yeah, one of our drivers is six, seven, so, um, yeah. somewhere around there. So it was really difficult to figure out how to size him in the truck and get him in the roll cage. So we dropped the floor down, you know, tried to expand the wheel, the wheel well or the, the foot well to fit the pedals and ended up with, yeah, a more central seating position. But I think we couldn't go all the way central because the, uh, the steering Miata column. steering column. Yeah. Ah. It, it's, a, it's a mix of an NB and an ND Miata steering column, and that's about as much as we could get it centered. It still, it worked. And so you guys have uh, e-stop. This is your ignition, yep. right? Uh, battery readout and some other information, racing steering wheel. The red button is your comms, comms yeah. right? Uh, and then there's a few other switches that we didn't actually use all of those. Yeah, a lot, of, just a lot of different options, right? So lights, um, you know, different pumps, fans, these type of things. And then also kind of atypical race car things like drive and reverse selectors are right. also switches. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people were stopping by th over the last day, day and a half even, excited to hear about the battery swap. Yep. So let's take a look uh, on that here a little bit more. So. Uh, oh, there's the uh, there's the motor right there. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen this before. But yeah, our motor is centrally mounted in the vehicle, or I guess mid-engined. <laughs> uh, then we have these two different roller plates uh, back here that are spring-loaded. Yeah. So when you put the battery on and you roll it all the way to the back, it hits those pins in the back and it gets sucked down. Then when you bolt it on the front, the whole thing gets clamped down to these plates on the outside. But when you release it, you can it pops up and you pull it out easier. That makes perfect sense. It, uh, it's easier to understand once you see it. Yes. But honestly, we were just whacking the batteries in and out. I didn't take a chance to look. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, in that gold, uh, the gold cover is the water cooling jacket for the motor. Um, so that's a Hyper 9, that's but a it Hyper is nine water cooled. It's a Hyper 9 from, I think it's EV Europe. Yeah. Okay. They make a water cooled version. Oh, that's awesome. 
And that made a big difference because with the, the normal Hyper 9 HV, we were able to run just fine. But when we turned on, turned up region, we really started overheating the motor, especially ah. on hot days. And having the water, cool jack, water cooling jacket made a huge difference. We had, it was 105 out, 110 out. We had no problems, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we saw a temperature warning light ever this race. No. So. That's really good. That's a huge success. Yep. <laughs> what is in this box here? I know that, uh, that these, this is our cable that goes into the battery and coolant that goes into the battery for yep. the coolant loop, but there's a big box under there. Yeah, so good if, we, stuff. if we start with the battery connector, um, it's an Anderson power connector. So it has the two high voltage leads and then also eight control signals. Uh, so we're able to route CAN to go talk to the BMS, which sits in the battery okay. pack, uh, and then also run some safety signals. So there's no way to close the contactors in the battery pack without providing the safety signals from the vehicle. So that's our, our fail safe. So the vehicle has to be happy, the motor controller has to be happy, the kill switches have to be happy, everything has to be happy to even power the contactors in the battery. And that's what happened to us earlier uh, during that battery swap when I was about to go out, right? You noticed that something was wrong. We have a hypothesis of what it is, but yeah. the safety system wasn't working. Right. Yep. So that's, that's kind of our fail safe safety system. So there's no way you can unplug that connector and it be live, right? Um, so yeah, so this box in here, um, this is the high voltage junction box. So the battery lead goes into the box. In the box, it's the inverter for the motor. Um, so you have your three phase output. Um, it also has our DC-DC, which charges the 12 volt system and the 12 volt battery off of the high voltage battery. Okay. Um, and then it also has a backup DC-DC, which runs the safety indicator lights. So you always know if the high voltage is active. So then this battery is what actually swaps into there. That's right. You slam it in. You want to see a swap? You uh, can load her up. Sure, let's do it. You guys have to do that anyway, right? We do. For travel? All right. A little slow because I don't know if I have to use <laughs> Yeah, ex take extra time. The battery is about 500 pounds. Nice and smooth. There it is. All right. Doesn't get smoother than that. Yep. All right, well, uh, let's maybe just take a lap around the, the rear of it. Now, how did you guys come up with this this design for for the shape? Lots I mean, it, it looks food. awesome. <laughs> Lots of Google food. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a few aerodynamics books out there for amateur racing and like just things along those lines. Like you want to get it streamlined, you don't want to go over eight degrees, uh, things like that. You're trying to get the air to come back and be as small of a wake as possible, essentially. So, Well, it ended up looking really, really good too. Thanks. <laughs> so maybe we'll just take one more lap around this side. And I guess my next question for you guys is what's, what's next? You beat your goal. You actually exceeded it getting over a thousand miles in this race. Um, what's what's next on your goals list next might be trying to figure out how to get a c-class win yeah yeah Which, yeah so there's a few things we need to do i think we need to figure out a bit more efficiency uh we need a bit more uh better displays for the driver because right now the driver does not have that much information so we want better battery information so temperatures and uh, cell voltages and all these things to help the driver make the right decisions and then also stream the telemetry so the pit wall can help make the right decisions and I think with that that'll help our strategy and kind of optimize our stints uh, and hopefully that combined with a bit more speed in the truck we can start competing for c-class wins awesome I look forward to it and uh, everyone make sure to go follow them on YouTube Instagram website whatever's your flavor and if you're out at one of these race events come say hi these guys are super nice and uh, I had such a good time hanging Absolutely. out with you guys over the last uh, yeah, day and a half. Thanks so much for joining the team. Hell Great yeah. Driving. Thank yeah. you guys. Bye.